know me yet. I'm Lorenzo, and I'm not from Italy. I'm from Spain. <laughs> and I'll tell you a little bit about my personal I'm professional, sorry, here. So, um, So that's me, the first day I arrived to DTU back in 2014. And actually, I remember it was Sunday and, uh, you know, I got a uh, kind of goodbye party on Saturday in Spain. And probably, uh, oh my God, my face is so big here in the <laughs> that's uh, So yeah, back in 2014, I arrived here. Uh, after one year here, I managed to get through ES to Denmark an internship in, in Canada, and actually I was working mainly as an energy analyst center with LEED certifications. Um, you got the wrong flag though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually I flew to the States and then go to, to Canada, but I was so excited because it was my first experience, short experience in the United States. <laughs> then um, I did my master thesis with Danfoss in collaboration with Danfoss within the district heating sector. So I changed completely from uh, my first intercity experience. And because of this master thesis, I managed to get a summer job at Colby in the district heating uh, department. So uh, Edo, uh, sorry, if you could uh, tell us more about that because he's working right now there. And then I start collaborating with Crenergy, that is a Danish Spanish uh, startup till I moved to Spain again. And that was during the selection process of EDP Renewables, my current company. And I wanted to show you this picture because it's a picture with Michal, and he's a Croatian guy who was studying also here in DTU. But during this election process, in the final round, that there were like 20 people, six of them were from DTU. Wow. So from this month. And let's start a proper presentation, <laughs> enough selfies today. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the, um, what I'm doing right now. I work in EDP Renewables. Um, it belongs to EDP, the Portuguese utility. And I work within the engineering and construction department, specifically in the engineering area. So uh, let's take a look at the general business overview about the company. So uh, we are present in uh, 13 geographies. We entered Greece um, two, three months ago with 45 uh, megawatts that will be under construction. Um, almost 50% of our capacity is in in US and we are basically now an on-song wind, on -song wind uh, company. So we are, of course, developing offshore in, in UK and we are developing solar right now. Actually, we bought two weeks ago 200 megawatts in Brazil. And yeah, so company is growing right now in mostly in the solar part and offshore wind part. So this is our main competitors. So uh, you can see the typical ones, Iberto Alanex, Sarah, Nigi, Orsted. Don't judge me about my pronunciation. And yeah, so uh, this is your general numbers. I would like to just highlight we are the fourth largest generator of wind energy in the, in the world. And here you can see uh, we are 1,220 employees, 34 nationalities, and 55% millennials. That's a really good point, especially for after work. <laughs> and so more about the engineering and construction department. Engineering construction department, basically, um, the, uh, the goal of this department is to design and construct EDPR infrastructures. So it's divided between engineering and construction part, and I'm working in the engineering, as I, as I said. So we are uh, supervising and designing all the uh, technical aspects of the wind onshore uh, projects. Okay, so let's take a look to um, one of the uh, daily tasks I have at work. Uh, here I have mentioned uh, CapEx estimation. We have 
this is this would be in the initial part of the project. So um, then uh, we try to apply the environmental sensitivities to our previous design in collaboration with uh, environmental departments. We work as well with the uh, drawings and the uh, the forms we need to to deliver to the different administration and and companies to have the access to the grid. And we work as well to uh, land permits that is basically generation of land maps in which you can see uh, the private areas that we invite with our wind farms. And in consequence, we need to agree with these private owners how we're managing uh, during the construction part. But I will focus more about the technical aspects that are uh, the more important, not more important because all of them are important, but uh, I spend most of my time in this technical aspect. So, uh, Wind Turbine Foundation, uh, we usually work with external companies developing the foundation of the wind turbines, and they are really important because and really relevant in terms of the of risk and, and cost of the final uh, project. We also work designing the access and internal roads. And here you can see the um, the simulation. We usually do simulation with the different wind turbine manufacturer regarding the transportation of blades and etc. Um, we design also the crane pads that are basically the platforms in which uh, you you, uh, you need to have the uh, the cranes in order to to uh, work with the uh, installation of the the wind turbines. Uh, of course, the underground collection routines, all the trenches, we can design drawings and then the construction area is in charge of make it real. Um, main electric and communication system has this medium voltage collection system that basically connects wind turbines between them and then wind turbines to the main substation, the substation, and the electrical uh, high voltage lines. It could be on the ground overhead, depending on the how difficult it arrives to the substation in that part. Okay, um, we don't have a lot of time, that's why I've listed here another import, important element like turnarounds or permanent mess, med, med tower. I hope the people from that department don't see this presentation because for them they are really, really important. Of course, they are important. <laughs> And this is a general overview about the um, uh, wind farm project in which uh, you can see the uh, wind farm, the high voltage line, and the substation. So let's move to the construction phase of a wind farm. Um, because although we are in the same department, it's a different area. So there, the construction managers basically need to manage different contracts and we work dividing the contracts in these five different groups. So the first group, it applied to the wind turbine manufacturer, and it basically covered the supply, transport, and installation of the wind turbines. Second, sorry, the second one is about the wind power plant BOP, regarding mostly the civil works. Uh, this is the substation contract the high voltage line contract and the connection work contract. This uh, last package cover basically the connection between our substation to a different substation of different connection points. And I would like to highlight here that uh, I was talking with uh, Matteo previous to the presentation about these different contracts. You, we usually work with the turnkey contracts and depending on the geography and depending on the experience of EDPR in this the geography. And the main difference is that EPC, sorry, EPC is an engineering procurement and construction in charge of the constructor. So it's a full package in charge of the constructor. And in consequence, the quality and final design would be according to that contractor. And then, instead, in the term K contracts, so we have the control about the, pros the, uh, the pro progress of the project. And, of course,
course, we'll have more responsibilities, but we have uh, more implication in the project. So that's the way usually EDPR works. And so, final interview, I would like to, to present this example. And this example is uh, really reflects how the difference between the engineering design and the construction uh, phase in some cases, because um, in most of the cases, what you reflect in a paper or you reflect in a project won't be exactly or will be executed at the same way in real life. So that was a project in north of Spain in which we designed the access roads of the, uh, in order to transport the wind turbines through a route in which they built a huge building when we were supposed to go across there. And the only option they saw at the moment in 2010, because I, I was still a student there, <laughs> uh, it was transport the blade by a helicopter. So uh, sometimes you need to be creative <laughs> and that was a, 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 an example that when I saw it for the first time, it was a bit crazy for me, but this is happening in real life, actually. And thanks for your attention. Thanks to you for my experience and thanks to other people. Questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very close. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering, so if you look at the size of your company compared to the amount of uh, countries in which are at, so your geographical footprint, mm -hmm. you can see that you're actually in quite a bit of countries compared to, to the size. You're just about a thousand people and have more or less everywhere around the world. I was wondering how do you handle the differences in terms of technical requirements, but also in, in terms of cultural differences when you work with you know, Mexico and Romania and all those different countries? Okay, th thanks for the question. That's a really good question, actually, uh, because EDP, uh, as the group, has around, if I'm not wrong, uh, around uh, more than 10,000 people working in EDP, and only uh, 1,200 working EDP renewables, that actually is the, the company in the group that is growing faster and faster. So that means that we have a lot of work, <laughs> all of us, and about the difference that you mentioned, of the different, different geographies, for example, um, EDPR is organized in two different platforms. So the first one is EDP Europe and Brazil platform. And it could be weird, but the thing is that uh, because of the cultural and the language between Portugal and Brazil, it's easier to communicate by themselves. It could happen the same with Mexico and Spain, but Mexico, is closer to the US, so Mexico is in the US North American platform, in which you can find Canada, US, and, and Mexico. Um, although we have these two different platforms, uh, we have different areas, onshore and offshore, that are recently uh, created, because we are trying to develop uh, offshore projects and compete with OSTEC. <laughs> I was also wondering, just a follow-up question, uh, do you have experts for all the different, you know, specific regulations or technical, you know, like regulations that you have in the different countries, or do you usually offsource that to local suppliers and local developers? Hmm. Meaning that you do, do you have a guy that knows a lot about, you know, electrical connection regulation in Greece, or is is that something that you usually outsource? Yeah. Okay. So in Greece, uh, at this so, part, that was just an example. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so for example, in Greece. Uh, we just uh, won this auction like two months ago, something like that. So I don't know what's happening there, but we are supposed to build this mailbox in, in two years. And um, the uh, um, how how EDPR works is that you have a special group, a specialist group in each country. Um, for example, like the, they have their own project development department, their own project management department. And these are the responsible, for example, of uh, uh, giving this knowledge about the regulation to the engineering team of that uh, geography. But also we have corporative uh, departments in engineering, construction, there's an operational support department, for example, who gives support to all the geographies and try to maintain the order and the standards between all the geographies because uh, 
of course, in, in different geographies, you have different way of words. And, and yep, yeah, SP. Yes. Thank you for the presentation. Um, in your selfie slides, you show the uh, very nice the of, uh, of you and your friend. And you said that you were six out of the last 20 that were yes. from DTU. Why do you think people from DTU has performed so well, also around in, in the world? Actually, I, I was so surprised because uh, my last day here in, in, in Denmark was um, Monday, 20, 27 of February. In 2016, it was a Monday, I remember, and I flew from Copenhagen to Madrid. And then Tuesday, I got the the interview. And when I arrived to the to the uh, to the room, which everybody was waiting in order to be divided for this group assessment day, I, I said a, a girl, Elena, who was studying with with me here in Sustainable Energy Master. I said, "What are you doing here? I saw you two days ago in Copenhagen." And uh, there was another guy, Alberto. That was Pablo. They were like five, six people, and I think because it's, uh, uh, I have no doubt that it's mm, probably the best master in sustainable energy in, in Europe. And, uh, not, not only because of the teachers, and, uh, <laughs> and, but, but also I feel that the, the, the most important point is all the people you meet here and all the international atmosphere that the master creates. Uh, that helps the, the international companies uh, to understand and to trust on you about um, being, being capable of working with different people, different geographies. And that's one of the most important things, I, I think, in our recruitment process. Yeah, uh, I didn't quite get the studied something and then you moved and you did some district heating and now you're working with wind turbines and and so i'm thinking like is that an easy thing to move around with and and what have these changed been been pretty easy on you or or and and which types of courses has kind of maybe helped you being able to make these switches mm. Uh, so, so yeah, as you say, I did the thermal energy study line. Uh, my first internship was about lead certification, and then I focused more about the uh, district heating sector. I did my master thesis in district heating, then the uh, summer job going district heating. I actually started working with Clenergy, collaborating with Clenergy, because by that time, Clenergy, the startup, was uh, developing a hydrogen battery in which they needed to kind of decide um, heating system of the uh, hydrogen battery. So I was by that time more into the thermal energy uh, sector, searching in the thermal energy position, but uh, I saw the uh, that EDPR was searching for renewable energy engineers. During the selection process, I thought that there was having some solar projects or solar thermal projects for me, but at the end, they relocate me to the engineering construction wind on shore that I've never been involved of well I took like two subjects here at DTU but you know there were people doing the full wind energy master and I wasn't into that specialization. But I think it was easy and the mm, the good point is that I learned a lot about the wind energy now because uh, uh, as I say I'm into the uh, I worked on my daily basis in civil and electrical works that I saw for my first time one and a half year ago. So I think it's been a good experience. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>